I've noticed a lot of people on the internet talking about the type of diets humans evolved to eat. And a lot of it is just people speculating on what they think humans ate. I don't know, based on movies they watched or wherever they get their ideas from with no real science involved. And other people say that we can't know precisely what humans ate, which while technically true up to a point, you'd be surprised how much we can know. And there are a few people mentioning branches of science like stable isotope analysis or chromatography mass spectrometry, which is nice to hear because those are real branches of science. But even still, some of the people using these terms don't seem to fully understand what they're talking about. So I want to take a deeper dive into stable isotope analysis and kind of touch on mass spectrometry, starting with this video, which is basically an introduction to stable isotopes and what they're used for. I want to give a disclaimer. I'm not a chemist, nutritionist, or archeologist, and I don't have a background in any of these fields. So as such, I'm going to refrain from telling anyone what they should or shouldn't eat, and please verify anything I say with an actual expert in these fields. From what I can tell though, there's a lack of people publishing such information on this on the internet, particularly around the chemistry or archeology span that I'm going to take a deeper dive into. So I figured I would go ahead and take a deep dive into this myself. So we'll start with hydrogen since it's a pretty simple atom. We can describe some examples of various isotopes of hydrogen. Using my low-tech Google Slides, we see three hydrogen atoms, and we know that they're hydrogen because they each have one electron one and one proton. <clears throat> However, what differentiates different hydrogen isotopes from each other are the number of neutrons in the atom. You'll see here going from left to right that there is an additional neutron in each atom. Each of these hydrogen isotopes has a name, protium, deuterium, and tritium, but the names aren't really that important to this discussion. And recall that I mentioned stable isotopes before. Not all isotopes are stable. Some are unstable, also known as radioactive. These decay over time, and they're useful for other purposes like determining the age of hominid remains. You'll probably recall hearing the phrase radiocarbon dating, and that's done with unstable carbon isotopes. I, I don't recall which carbon isotope, and I'm pretty sure it decays into some type of nitrogen atom, but um, I can get into the specifics of that in a future video. The stable isotopes do not decay over time, and they can be used as a way to figure out things like ancient hominid diets. You'll also see at the bottom, I've separated out the light isotopes from the heavy isotopes. What makes deuterium and tritium heavy is that they have a higher atomic weight each proton and neutron has an atomic weight of roughly one. So protium has an atomic weight of one, deuterium has an atomic weight of two, and tritium has an atomic weight of roughly three. The electrons are so light that they don't really count towards atomic weight. The different atomic weights of isotopes result in different biological or ecological processes. And by that, I mean that you'll see certain heavier isotopes more densely populated around certain biological or ecological processes. So for example, hydrogen and oxygen atoms are what makes up water, and water evaporates. The heavier isotopes of hydrogen and oxygen are less likely to participate in this evaporation, so you'll see a higher concentration of heavy hydrogen isotopes and heavy oxygen isotopes in ocean water than you'll see in rainwater. Um, so in this example, like water would evaporate out of the ocean and become rain, but because the water that evaporated was made up of lighter isotopes, you'll see a higher percentage of the lighter isotopes in the rainwater. And you'll also hear people mention nitrogen isotopes to support the view that humans derived the vast majority of their energy and nutrition from animal food sources over the past few million years. I would agree with that assessment. I will say that if nitrogen isotopes were the only isotope under review, then there would be some ambiguity around the food sources in ancient human diets since there, there's more than one way that an organism can acquire different concentrations of heavier nitrogen isotopes. In the future, I wanna go into stable isotopes of other atoms in addition to tangently related branches of science that altogether I really do believe support the view that humans got most of their food from animal food sources. Uh, but that's a topic for another video. I will briefly touch on some of the most common atoms studied when piecing together ancient human diets. Here they are. This is more of a 10,000 foot overview and a vast oversimplification, but the atoms are nitrogen, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, sulfur, and strontium. 
And you can kind of see here what each of these can tell about the particular human that is under um, under review when this, this analysis is done. So I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, thank you for watching.